In this lecture, we are going to talk about digital pulse keeping control and with some MATLAB simulation case studies. So, in this lecture, we will first introduce the pulse keeping modulation, then digitization technique in pulse keeping, then voltage board digital pulse keeping architecture, peak current based mixed signal pulse keeping control and MATLAB simulation. So, here the classical uh, analog pulse keeping modulation, uh, this is the diagram. So, in this diagram, if you see in fact, we have discussed in lecture number I think 24, lecture 24 in our NPTEL that means control and tuning methods. This in NPTEL course. So, this we have discussed in pulse keeping control. So, here you know. So, for detail one can refer there. So, how does it work? So, first there is a D flip flop at every rising edge of the switching clock it checks whether output voltage is higher than V rep or lower than V rep. If output voltage is smaller than V0 then this output will be 1 this comparator output will be 1 and that will pass D will be reflected to Q, Q will be high, Q PSM will be high and it will simply pass the same clock here. That means, if the output voltage is smaller than V0, that means it understand that your you need to boost some energy, inject some energy, then it goes to high pulse and that it takes the due ratio of the clock which is here Q and that QP and that is the charge pulse and throughout this cycle it will take this due ratio. Once it goes above, then it will skip the pulse and that time whatever you can see this cycle voltage is higher. So, this cycle is skipped. This cycle is it is higher, it will also so two subsequent cycle it skips. During charge pulse, the, the signal Q in this case we are taking a fixed duty ratio that is reflected in the control. So, it means during charge pulse it is like a PWM control in this case with a fixed duty ratio and during other time if the output would be higher than VREP, it will simply skip the cycle. Now, if you want to digitize, what will do? this block comparator will digitize and instead of using analog comparator, we can simply use a A2D converter. Suppose we are incorporating this PSM logic into an existing DPWM logic, it is very simple. We will take the advantage of the ADC, take the sample there and the sampling clock it will take same as the switching clock. So, every it is the same rate, but the, the instant will be different. The sample voltage will be compared with VREP because it is fixed throughout the clock cycle and if it is smaller than VREF that means we need to inject charge this D become high and it will pass the rotation. So, we are digitizing this block and this is a digital part. So, what does it do? That means we are taking sample and as I said the sampling clock and the switching clock their frequency are same, but their edges are different. So, sample will be captured first before the switching clock start. That is why this sample will be held and this will check whether this voltage is beyond above VREP. So, in this case above, so this cycle, this particular cycle will be skipped. This is also above, this cycle will be skipped, these two cycles are skipped. Then if you come, it is below, it will be reflected here. So, that will undergo a charge pulse. So, here the difference is we are only digitizing this loop. What will be the advantage? Because we are assuming the controller itself has a digital we simply take the sample and we will take the decision whether it will pass or not. Once it goes, then we can use a fixed clock due to ratio. But what is the problem during charge pulse? That means it is giving a DCM, it is under light load. So, there is skip cycle. So, now this on time of this clock will be decided by the due to ratio. How to take the due to ratio? Whether should we take a large value, small value? And based on that, the amount of energy will be injected. If you take a large due ratio, if the input voltage increases, then the ripple current can be much larger 
and it may violate the ripple constant of the output voltage. So, this ripple can violate the limit and that may not be acceptable. If you take a two level duty ratio, then you may encounter more frequent charge pulses with very less number of skip cycle and that may not be productive because you are burning unnecessary power because too many switching will happen. So, you need to get some better control over the duty ratio. So, here we can do MATLAB case study, I am going to do that. Okay, so, let us go to the MATLAB case study. So, if we go to the MATLAB, so this is the classical pulse skipping. You can see that here we are taking the ADC voltage, output voltage, sample voltage and we are using a clock which with a delay that means we are first sampling as if before minus TD is the delay time and then we are actually passing through this pulse skipping. That means there is a reference voltage you can see if you go inside what it will show if output voltage is smaller than or reference voltage is larger than output voltage it will pass to DLAC and it will turn on turn off. So, if we run this classical pulse skipping, so this is our classical pulse skipping, so option 1 will run it, then we will see what happened to our hour. So, you can see there is a load transient additional. So, initially the load current was bit high, that means you can see that we are operating at 500 kilohertz, but if you zoom this portion you will find oh this is output voltage ripple. So, the best thing we will go to the inductor current. So, here what we are trying to do if we take one particular instant. So, let us say we are talking about this instant. So, it is in millisecond that means it is not switching in every cycle that means if you zoom this portion particular our time period is 2 that means up to this point is a 2 microsecond. So, that means these are charge pulse and remaining this, this, these are the skip pulse there are too many skip pulses it is under light load condition. Now, if the load current further decreases the number of skip cycle further increases. So, you can see effectively between the two load. So, this is little bit higher load. So, we will go what is the load current condition. So, before uh, transient it was 100 milli ampere. Now, we have applied a minus 50 load step that means we are changing from 100 milli ampere to 50 milli ampere. So, naturally number of skip cycle should increase and that is reflected in this waveform. And you can see the output voltage ripple actually more or less remains same. But what will happen in this case suppose instead of load transient we make a supply transient that means we do not make load transient we will change the delta V in. So, it is now let us say uh, 6 volt. So, you want to make increase the input voltage to another 6 volt. So, 6 volt to 12 volt changes. Now, we want to see the transient. So, you can see for lower input voltage the pulse keeping was happening, but the higher input voltage since you are using a fixed duty ratio the on time during this on time the slope of the inductor current is much faster and as a result the peak current has increased from 3 ampere to almost 6.5 ampere which is not acceptable because the output voltage ripple is also too large. It is too large. So, it is not acceptable because it has increased drastically. So, how to overcome this problem? So, that means we have discussed the classical pulse keeping. Now, we want to move to our uh, classical pulse keeping we have discussed. So, these are the waveform we have shown. Now, in order to avoid such large high peak current, we want to limit that means ultimately we have to generate the duty ratio this is the charge pulse that is the bottom line. So, this is a charge pulse, this is a skip pulse right. So, here during this charge pulse we have to calculate this duty ratio. So, earlier we are fixing the duty ratio. Now, suppose if the input voltage increases then what will happen this refer sorry this will go up. So, if the input voltage increases then this slope will increase as a result you will have a larger current right. 
so this will increase so that means as the input voltage increases then your peak current will increase and that will create a huge current uh, in uh, you know peak current and that will increase the voltage level but we want to adjust this due to ratio how to do so alternative way we are fixing with the reference current with a reference current which is a constant value and during charge cycle the inductor current will simply take that value come back and do so that means here in this case the due to ratio d of t what is d of t if the slope is m1 it is in steady state that means our d of t is nothing but our i ref that is our fixed value divided by m1 so for buck converter what is m1 it is v in minus v0 by l so it will be simply l divided by v in minus v ref if it is regulated perfectly into i ref and if we want to find out d then we will take l by t t will be coming this side into i ref by v in minus v ref so that means for a given l and t given reference current if the input voltage increases the due to ratio will decrease as a result it will automatically adjust and if we can keep this ripple more or less constant then we can expect the output voltage ripple will be more or less constant so we want to implement this that means now we have an additional current loop that means the due to ratio is instead of passing this clock to here we are passing this clock to here okay analog in fact in majority of the commercial product it has a protection circuit current protection so that means current sensing is there and protection so we can utilize that to generate the peak current based psm that is also possible so this is the uh, diagram where the irf is there and the other logic of pulse keeping remains same we are not touching the psm enable or disable clock when to decide charge cycle when to decide keep cycle this is decided by the earlier logic but only during charge cycle the due to ratio will be decided by this loop ok and you can see this is the i ref and if you want to do digital control then what will do only this block will digitize ok and this will only it will there will be ended with the gate signal coming from the current reference ok. So in mix signal this is our ADC this part is digital everything is digital so here here the all blocks are digital in fact these whole clocks are in the digital domain because the latch circuit and circuit everything digital domain only output voltage and this output voltage assuming that it is already a digitally controlled converter and I want to improve the light load effect. So here it is your sense current for protection purpose this may be a protection current and then you have analog converter because in protection circuit also if the current exceeds some limit it has to stop. So this circuit can be utilized to do this implementation and we want to see the MATLAB case study. So let us go to the MATLAB and see the case study here. So in this case now we want to go for option 2. What is option 2? In the option 2 this is the current mode control case study. Here you can see these blocks remain same there is no change in this block. Now if you go inside. So you will find now these blocks remain same but this block is a additional. So this is like a peak current base PSM and that gives the due to ratio. So this due to ratio generation block is a new addition and that is in this case that means you are incorporating here. And now if you want to simulate the option 2 you can see we are making a supply transient that means you can see the but the inductor current remains same because we are using up 2 ampere peak current in this case. So let us see uh, instead of 2 ampere we can use 3 ampere to match the earlier case no problem. So if you do that you will see this 2 ampere peak current difference 3 ampere is fixed but and here 3 millisecond we are applying a transient sorry at 2 millisecond we are applied transient. So 2 millisecond you will not find any effect because the pulse keeping has 
keep, keep the peak current same. So, I mean you can maintain the ripple. So, you can see the output voltage ripples are more or less same, but you may find some high periodic behavior because in case of charge pulse keeping, we are let us say we are giving one charge pulse and that gives some duty ratio and during that time the energy is injected. The same energy has to be delivered in the capacitor in the subsequent skip cycle. So, ultimately over a period of one charge and few skip there should be charge balance. But suppose if there is a slight change in input voltage that means you are giving increase input voltage, you are giving some excess charge and over 5 skip cycle they may not be perfectly balanced. There can be some residual uh, charge so that over a multiple uh, you know cycle of charge pulse followed by skip pulse that period our multiple like a after 3, 4 combination of this there can be an extra skip pulse and because of that this high periodic behavior is coming and this has been well researched. In fact, we have first identified this technique for analog pulse keeping control and subsequently there are multiple literature to address this. But this is not a big deal because we are not this is not affecting too much the ripple current. So, it is fine. So, we may go ahead with this design. So, that means we have discussed that how to design this current based mixed signal PSM and these are the result for change in you know you can change input voltage, load current whatever it is. So, that means we have introduced pulse keeping modulation. Now, we want to check for the same MATLAB case study. Suppose if we now instead of input voltage change we want to make load transient that means we 0 and here we will make minus 50 milli ampere load current change. So, that means 100 milli ampere to 50 milli ampere there is a change. You see automatically number of skip cycle increases. So, an effective switching frequency seems to be reduced. So, that means it retain all the benefit of pulse skipping at the same time it can manage the ripple adjustment. It is kind of an adaptive duty ratio control under charge cycle. So, it is a pulse skipping with adaptation in the duty ratio. So, we have discussed this. So, in summary we have discussed the pulse keeping operation, we have discussed the digitization method, we have discussed voltage based digital pulse keeping control, we have discussed peak current based mixed signal pulse keeping and we have considered multiple simulation case studies. So, in the subsequent lecture when you go to hardware implementation, we want to implement some of this logic in the digital control platform using FPGA and we want to show some practical demonstration case studies. That is it for today, thank you very much.